For much of last year, Turkey and Greece saw a series of standoffs in the energy-rich eastern Mediterranean. Disputes over gas exploration rights, maritime borders to the lingering question of Cyprus's future brought tensions to their worst in decades. But a long-running point of contention didn't get as much attention. The Greek government's treatment of its Turkish minority has been steadily worsening over the years. And that policy continued after Athens announced it was closing a dozen primary schools belonging to the Turkish minority in Greece. Around 150,000 Turks live in the western Thrace region. The community has seen a slow erosion of their rights and cultural protections afforded to them by the Lausanne Treaty, signed a century ago. Many are now warning that those rights are under threat. And to break down this latest dispute, joining me now from Ankara is Giray Sadik. He is the director of the EU Research Center at Yildirim Beyazıt University. And from Ankara, Tudor Onea. He is an assistant professor at Bikant University. Gentlemen, welcome to Straight Talk. It's good to have you on the program. Giray, have these schools really been closed as part of austerity measures? Or is this the continuation of the systematic assimilation, as Turkey argues? Well, um, we, uh, we know that this has been going for a while. In about a decade, the number of uh, schools of Turkish minority in Greece almost half from 200 to 100 something. And with recent closure of uh, about 12 schools, uh, we've seen that this is only a drop on top of the full glass. We can have that uh, analogy. And those excuses are completely irrelevant and unacceptable as the rights of Turkish minority in Greece are guaranteed by Lausanne Peace Treaty. Therefore, they are part of international law if uh, those excuses of austerity are uh, really sincere, then Greece might have demanded Turkish support uh, officially uh, from Turkey to Turkish minority, and then um, some financial uh, aid uh, could have been considered in spirit of cooperation. Uh, this is uh, what is expected, not only in spirit of cooperation and good neighbor, uh, Linus, but also in terms of international law and international treaties, yes. as well as minority rights. So, Tudor, uh, what's your take on this latest decision? I mean, could you tell us about the Greek policy here? I mean, where is this headed? For example, will these students be guided to other schools where they can really uh, study in their mother tongue? Uh, from what I can see, this is the latest uh, in the, you know, back and forth uh, between uh, Greece and Turkey. And, uh, you know, this is uh, just, uh, as far as I understand, it shouldn't really be considered on its own, but rather be considered in a whole context of signals and counter signals that uh, Ankara and Athens are sending to each other. Mm -hmm. um, so we, on, on uh, July 13, what, what is happening, we have the Turkish UN representative, which is sending a letter to the United Nations Secretary General asking for the demilitarization of the islands in the Aegean. Then on the 27th, Two weeks later, we are getting, you know, the Greek representative to the United Nations responding to this letter and accusing Turkey of, uh, hot, you know, uh, malevolent intentions about on, uh, you know, the sovereignty of this island. So this is simply backing, backing the ante. Mm -hmm. And so if everything, you know, would, uh, would work according to plan in about two weeks or so, we are probably going to see a counter move from the Turkey side. So, uh, Giray, what's the reason behind the Greek refusal to recognize as Turks? I mean... Turkish Muslims? Well, uh, that question better be directed uh, to the Greek authorities who deny that. But what I can see is this is completely futile uh, as uh, those uh, Turkish Muslims are not only there for centuries, but also they are protected by international treaties. Therefore, they are part of international law. And by Greece having provocations and pressures on Turkish minority, I think uh, it is not only it cannot be only taken as an uh, as a signaling uh, in a in a series of disputes, mm -hmm. but also an active violation of international law, which uh, other international bodies such as EU and NATO should put the necessary pressure on Greece uh, to act in line with international law and minority and to protect the minority rights right, of Turks right. there. 
So just a few days ago, a Turkish citizen was shot, uh, Tudor, in northwestern Edirne province. The shots came from the Greek side of the border. How would this latest move and the killing, of course, add to the uh, already existing problems between the two? It's very clear that there are tensions ongoing between the two sides. I'm not really sure if this was, uh, you know, intentional. Probably, probably not. Uh, but this is what is likely to happen when uh, tensions are are uh, running high. Um, and so here you have to understand that Greece doesn't have a lot of ways of, you know, exerting coercion on Turkey by itself. I mean, its best bet would be uh, to prompt a Turkish counter-reaction that would make Greece appear as a victim, pose, uh, you know, as uh, pretty much the bullet side, and therefore other, you know, Greek partners, particularly the, the European Union, might then intervene to, to the rescue. And of course, it is in the interest of uh, Turkey not to play in, not to play this Greek game, right? Okay, so, uh, I mean, for much of the last year, Girai, we've seen tensions to their mm -hmm. worst in decades. Uh, and we have seen direct talks resuming after an interval of five years. Did we get any fruitful results? Uh, not so much. And in international politics, there is a saying, it takes two to tango. So despite Turkey's best efforts, uh, Turkey has seen very limited, if any, reciprocation on the Greek side. With my colleague, the recent shooting is also uh, another provocation. Uh, we should, of course, wait and see if it is planned, if they were soldiers from Greek side or just civilians. But very importantly, even if uh, that is uh, not a provocation, which we all want to think like that, then the Greek side should timely prosecute the responsible ones and inform Turkey and international community for this grave breach uh, resulting uh, in the shooting and killing of a Turkish civilian. Mm -hmm. uh, this is very important. This cannot be taken as any sort of uh, political signaling. And to prevent any misunderstanding, uh, and for Greece, another opportunity yes. to show their goodwill. They should take the necessary actions. Turkey is not a country to be, to be coerced in any fashion, uh, even with minor incidents, uh, should be taken seriously. Okay, so uh, what I understand is uh, that Tudor Greece doesn't want to talk to Turkey at the moment. Is it in its benefit not to talk to Turkey? And how do you think the United Nations as well as the European Union been effective in bringing restraint to the um, to these tensions? Uh, this is this is the great the great question, right? Isn't it? Because the truth is, I don't think that the European Union wants uh, you know to take the Greek chestnuts out of the fire. And so uh, if Greece is going to push past a certain point, Greece is going to find itself in the lurch all alone. Right, which is probably what 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 Turkey should should be aiming at. So in in this relation, in which you know Greece is trying various things to try and get an overreaction out of Turkey, the best thing to do would be to play the adult in the in the relation, because you know in terms of strength, uh, in terms of demographics, in terms of economics, in terms of military, of course Turkey has the advantage, and therefore it can afford. Right, mm -hmm. not to overreact. Mm -hmm. uh, Greece, the only the only way it can it can uh, you know magnify its advantage is to bring over other countries to bring to you know put pressure put pressure on Turkey. Mm -hmm. That's that's about that's about you know the only the only thing that that it can do. And the fact is, I mean, we are seeing if it is reduced to closing schools. I mean, it's um, the amount of things that it can do are are, are very, is fairly limited. Yeah, okay. So, uh, Girai, how do you see Turkey's relations with the European Union moving forward? Um, well, that is important. I think, um, continuing with the Greek side, Greece is a member of the European Union, and the EU uh, should lead by example here in terms of um, enforcing uh, its human rights concerns uh, over its members, mm -hmm. which EU claims to be the champion uh, in terms of human rights and minority rights. Uh, if EU uh, fails to act here, who can take EU seriously uh, when, when it comes to uh, uh, talking about human rights uh, or minority rights uh, in Turkey? So uh, that is, uh, it is very important. And uh, for another reason also, 
if uh, EU uh, wants to have any kind of de-escalation role uh, in terms of Turkish-Greek relations, then before Turkey, they should take Turkey's warnings uh, timely. And before Turkey reacts by hard measures, mm -hmm. uh, they should uh, convince Greece. Yes, I agree with my colleague, Turkey is acting and should continue to act like adult in the room. But the big question is, uh, until when the EU will keep uh, supporting Greece to act as a spoiled child in the room? Okay. Uh, so there is, uh, there is an end of everything. All right, gentlemen, we'll have to leave it here. Thank you very much for joining us Thank on you. Straight Talk.